need that motion activated night light for the bathroom? Or if you're like me, your wife continues to bug you to put a motion sensor in the kitchen for automatic lights, but you just couldn't find that perfect spot until now. Or the kids can't reach the light switch or they're always leaving the lights on. Make the bathroom smarter with the motion sensor to turn on the overhead lights. And I want to thank Darren slash Dinotech on Discord. I appreciate the opportunity to put something together like this and share it to all the viewers. Let's get to it. So we got the iMoz Smart Buff series, whatever that possibly might mean. It's a Wi-Fi smart plug. This is the US model of it. I'm sure they probably have other plug models that may be similar to this one. Let's take a look inside. So we got the instruction manual. Of course we don't need that. Typically you'd pair this thing with the Smart Life or the Tuya app. You can use that with Home Assistant or various other configurations, but we're gonna be putting Tasmodo on this thing because we're gonna be modifying it to do a motion detector. This is the similar little PIR sensors that we've used before. We use them in the KU LED switches. It just takes voltage in, ground, you got signal out, and they run great off of 3.3 volts. This has a night light inside. There's some LEDs, and this is a toggle. It toggles the relay and the relay amount is 10 amps. So let's open this thing up. We'll take our blade, put it right here in the top. This pops open and the cover comes right off the little diffuser cover. And inside eight LEDs and the TYW E3S to your module that we're very familiar with in flashing. So one thing to note, we will be doing some minor soldering. So we'll pay attention not to touch the side and melt the plastic. So let's just get this thing prepared to flash Tasmodo on it. So we're going to make some short jumpers. This is a jumper I normally use for flashing some of these. But I'm going to shorten this up. I don't want all of that extra wiring inside. So we'll use this as a positive and we'll do one about the same length for the ground. We'll also need another one for the GPIO pin that we do for the for the PIR sensor. We use a purple one for that. Go a little longer just in case. Strip these and get them tinned and ready to solder to the unit. Those three jumpers. We need another one for ground. GPIO zero should be the button. If you put solder on your wires and you put solder on your pads, then when you go to put them together, you just heat them together and they pull right together. So what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of solder on e on the soldering iron and I apply it and it pulls right into it. There we go. Wire is going to stay in there, have take a little more time to have a good soldering connection in there and have it laying flat. You put these wires in an L shape as so and just holds pressure when you put the heat to them. Like I said these can just go in at whatever angle because we're going to pull these right back out. Make sure they're not touching. And then we'll hook up our FTDI adapter and flash Tasmodo on it. Let's get this wired up here. Got the orange, there's our VCC. We're on 3.3 volts. The ground goes to ground. Top is the gray wire, that's TX, which goes to the RX on the FTDI adapter. 
and the yellow wire is the last one left plug it in get our bin file for Tasmoda you can use just a Sonoff bin we've shown that before if you look back at my KU LED flashing video or the Sonoff S31 video we'll show you how to download the ESP flash easy and the sonoff.bin file for Tasmoto. So we'll go ahead and we'll hold down the button on the side as we apply this to the USB, put it in flashing mode, or flash ESP8266. We got COM27, your COM port may be different. Pick my Tasmoto file I use, and let's see if we got it. And you know you got it, and if you got the little dots going across the screen. You don't do it on first chance, maybe you have RX or TX, Switched up, switch up those two pins, hold down the button, and plug it back into USB and try it again. If not, make sure and check your wires that you're not uh, touching any soldering points and you have some good clean connections on the chip. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it on the first try. Once you see this message, the flash complete, click OK. Now go ahead and unplug it from USB for a few seconds and then plug it back in. Then we'll need to open up Termite. Once you have Termite opened up, make sure it's on your COM port, same one, you use in the Flash ESP8266, if not, make sure and change it, hit OK, click down here towards the bottom and hit Enter. If you get these two lines, you know you have Tasmoto working. And at this point, we'll put in our backlog, we'll put in our Wi-Fi SSID and password. So once we put in our backlog, for the SSID and password, you should get connected up. You might possibly see the MQTT connection fails because we don't have that configured yet. At this point, you can actually browse to the IP address shown here. In my example, is 10.10.177, and we'll do that now. So once you browse to that web address, it'll default to Sonoff Basic. We'll go ahead and put in your MQTT information. You go into Configuration, go into Configure MQTT. You'll put in your host, put in your user, your password, we'll set a topic. We're gonna to call it Motion Night One. And we'll save it. And now you should see the messages of MQTT fail and go away. Back to main menu. Now we need to figure out the GPIO pins. So if you go to configuration, go to configure module, and change it to generic. Generic's all the way at the bottom. And hit save. We'll also, while we're here, Go to configure other and go to friendly name and we'll call it motion night one hit save that's going to change the friendly name at the top then we'll go to configure module and then we have all the gpio pins so an easy way to find this out now the relay is not going to click we're going to need to attach that back to mains power before we do that so we'll go ahead and unsolder rx and tx lines we're gonna remember gonna leave the power in the ground lines and then we'll figure out which line we're gonna use for the data in from the motion sensor. We'll disconnect this from the USB flasher. Okay, so now that we have this connected to mains, I'm simply using a small extension cord and plug this in. So let's see if we can figure out the lights, the relay, and the button. We already know the button is GPIO0. So GPIO0, and we're actually going to do this as a switch because I want to do a short press and a long press action. We'll do it as switch 1. We know it's not going to be the TX and the RX. So what we'll do is for GPIO2, we're going to set that to relay 1. GPIO4, relay 2. GPIO5, relay 3. GPIO 12, Relay 4, and so forth. Once we have them configured, GPIO 0, switch 1, then Relay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll save it. Hit the main menu. Then we'll just start toggling the relays to see if we can figure out which one does the actual relay and which one does the light. So nothing here. Nothing. Nothing on 3. Oh, there's a light. So light is going to be on Relay 4. We'll turn that off. So five, six. So relay is on relay seven. So we got four and seven. And then eight should do nothing. So we'll go back to configuration. Configure module. So relay four is going to get PWM1 for the light. And then 
relay seven gets relay one. And then all of these get set back to none. So there's a configuration. GPIO zero, switch one. You could use button one, but in this case, we're gonna do switch one because I wanna do a short and a long press action. One downside to that is if you want to reset it using the 40 second long press, you would not be able to do that with it set to switch. You would need to have it set to button. So we'll save this. So now we've got two toggles. Toggle one, turns on and off. We'll make sure the button does the same thing. As you can see, it's toggling it real quick. We need to change that with a switch mode. Toggle two should do the lights. And you'll notice we have a slider. We can change the brightness of the night light, which is pretty cool. So we'll go into console. We need to figure out this switch mode. And again, we wanted to do a long press and a short press. So we'll start by trying switch mode one five. Let's see what happens here. And that turns the relay on and it turns the relay off. And we're going to go ahead and put in our rule for a long press. Rule one on switch one state equals three do power two toggle end on then we'll turn that rule one on set option 32 for 7.7 7 seconds the default is four seconds of holding down. I don't want to wait four seconds. So we'll try this. We'll hold this down. And the lights turn off. So what the rule is doing is on switch one, state three, which is the long press, it does a power two toggle. It's just going to toggle the night light on and off. It's not setting the brightness, so it reuses the brightness it was previously set at. If you wanted to set the brightness to make sure it's the same brightness every time you want to do the long press, you could also do a backlog in there. So we'll try it again. We'll hold it down and the night light turns back on. So now we need to figure out which pin we're going to use for the motion. So let's see what pin would be easier to solder. So I'm using my trusty sheet I always look at when for the power strip I've done in the past. We'll look at the GPIO pins to see which one would be easy to solder to. So currently we're using GPIO 12 and 15. So it's using one on the left over here and the very bottom one by ground. So possibly an easy one to get to would be really close to the RX line. We'll use GPIO 5. So that would be D1. So we'll attach our purple wire to that one. We'll just unplug it. Make sure it's dead. Okay, so we got a little bit of solder on the third pin down. We'll make the same L shape. So now we'll connect up our motion. So always check your motion sensor. This one I happen to be using, it has actually labeled on here. You have positive on the left, the out's gonna be in the middle, and the negative is on the right. So the orange is our hot. The data out is one in the middle, round. apply it back to mains power. So now we've applied mains power back again. Now we need to go back, go configure switch two to GPIO five. So go to configure module. We'll do it switch two in for no pull up. We don't need to pull up with this particular motion sensor. Back to main menu. 
and you should see automatically the motion will start triggering the PWM because it's switched to. So you pass your hand next to it, you'll notice automatically it's only going to go for the few seconds that this particular PIR sensor does. It triggers for so long while motion is going, then turns itself back off, which will automatically turn the LEDs back off. So next we're going to drill a hole and mount the motion sensor straight into the diffuser plate and button this thing back up. And we're almost done. So let's mark our hole where we're going to put this PIR sensor. It's probably going to go about right there in the middle. Should be high enough and give us clearance for the wires. So we'll mark it with a marker. That way. And then we'll take the drill to it. Doesn't have to be perfectly center, but we'll try and get it as close as possible. Sometimes I find I'll use some blue painter's tape to try to center things up if you're trying to make things look exact. But this is just one little sensor, so we won't have to go to all that. Put down our block of wood. Our test fit. It's always a good idea to always drill the hole smaller than you need. You can always make the hole bigger, but you can't make it smaller easily. Just do a little bit at each time until we can get this to pop in here. All right, just got that part popped in. We'll pop the cap on. Probably what we'll do should be able to just push it straight into it and it should hold without even having to glue it since it's got the flared cap on it. If you drill the hole a little too big and it won't stay in anymore you could just take a little bit of hot glue on the inside and that would keep that sensor from falling inside or falling out etc. So once we got the hole drilled the sensor popped in and secured and the power is off to this unit right now so why don't we mess with this with power on. What I had to do for clearance wise, if you could look at the sensor and you can, if you take your needle nose pliers, you can, if you carefully bend the pins and the sensor up top without breaking the contacts, you can get it in an arced shape like this and it doesn't change the functionality of the sensor. And this gives you the ability that whenever this is in here, when you pop it back in, it'll be about like this. And that way it clears everything without touching any of the LED chips or the Tuya module. So this is keyed. There's a small key on one part. It's hard to see on the camera, but it's right here. And there's a key on the sensor. And make sure you don't get anything on the sensor. If you do, you want to clean it off. We'll line this up and get the key on here and push the sensor into it like so. And the sensor should fit into it and then it fits into that key. Check our pins again. And make sure the wires aren't getting bunched in. Make sure it's going to close up. And close her up. And there we have your night light that's mobile. You move it around, move it to which room you want. Has your relay for whatever you want to switch on and off has your night lights and it has a motion sensor of course if you, you could also do a temperature and humidity sensor if you would cut into here and put the temperature and humidity sensor and then say if you wanted to put the motion sensor on the side you could you kind of have to use your imagination that fits your home or situation that you have now if you go to the console you should be able to pass our hand and the light turns on because remember we set the PIR sensor to switch to which is automatically tied to the LED lights. Now we want a little bit longer motion light than just a few seconds. So what we can do is with a rule. So the rule will be rule one, if you on switch to state do backlog so what this is going to fire off, this rule, no matter if the motion is triggered from 0 or 1, from no motion or, or motion, do a backlog command of power 2 because we want to turn the motion light on. Now if you wanted to turn the relay on, you could also change this to power 1. 
power two on semicolon for the new command we'll set a rule timer one of 20 seconds and we'll end the rule then inside the same rule buffer we'll do another rule and say on rules timer equals one which means when the timer finishes, when that timer of 20 second finishes, it's gonna run a power to off command. So do, do power to off end on. And hit enter. Make sure and turn your rule one on with a rule one space one. And also just to make sure that you have switch mode two, which is the PIR sensor set to one. And what that is, is going to do a zero state when there's no motion or one state when there is motion. So now to test it, we'll pass our hand over. And if you watch on the console, it automatically it does a backlog power two with a rule one timer of 20 seconds. Now it triggers it again when there's no motion. So it starts counting down 20 seconds. As soon as 20 seconds transpires, it's going to fire off the power to off command, which will turn the LEDs off. And if you want a different time than 20 seconds, of course, you would just change that number from 20 to, say, 300 or whatever you wanted for your nightlight when it was motion activated. So to go over that rule again real quick is rule one on switch to state. And you can, we're saying any state we need to do a backlog, which is a batch of commands. The first one is power to on, which turns on the LEDs. It's gonna use the previous brightness we had set. It sets a timer for 20 seconds and then ends the rule. There's another rule that says on rules timer equals one. When this rule timer finishes, do a power to off. And so that's how you have a motion activated light that lasts for 20 seconds when it gets motion. Very simple to do with rules. If you also wanted to throw in a MQTT publish of a PIR so you could actually see it in Home Assistant, you could do another rule, rule two on switch to state do publish. We'll call it to motion, motion night one PIR percent value percent end on make sure and turn rule two on so now what that's going to do anytime the motion is activated it's going to post an MQTT message of zero or one payloads to that motion night one slash PIR so there you can see it ran the timer and you can see it posted to MQTT motion night one PIR equals one so you could put a binary sensor, which we've gone over in previous videos, exactly the configuration YAML of binary sensor when we did the motion activated uh, KU LED switch. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you can build something like this or similar, whether you use a temperature sensor such as the Dallas sensor or the DHT22 or any type of LUX sensors. Feel free to comment down below and see what show everybody else what you built. In the description of the video, I'll leave links to the Home Assistant YAML for controlling the relay, the dimming, and also receiving the binary sensor for the PIR sensor with the rule I showed. Be sure and give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you like the video. If you want to see something else, let us know. Be sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can catch our next video. Y'all take care.